Hi all. Today we'll learn how to use React developer tools in a React application. So I have taken an sample counter React example. This is where I can increment and decrement an item. As on when I increment and decrement, the card value would be modified. So let's see React developer tools with this application. For that, we need to install a Chrome extension. Search for Chrome extensions in the Google search. And first link Chrome Web Store here. If you click here and uh, go to Chrome extensions, search for React Developer Tools, which was offered by Facebook. Once you add this to your Chrome, you may need to restart your browser, or else sometimes it would be reflected straight away to your developer tools. So let's see that. I'm trying to access the developer tools. So I got two tabs, components and profiler. Once if you add this React developer tools to your Chrome, you would be getting these two tabs, components and profiler. Let's see how we can use these two tabs. So as on when I want to inspect this element. So I don't know exactly what is this element because in elements tab, everything you see is in HTML format. You can not identify what component is what. I mean, in a large application, React application, everything is decoupled in terms of components. You need to identify what component is rendered at what place. If you inspect some element and come back to this elements tab, you will be identifying everything in these terms. So you can't identify what exactly is this component. So if you go back to the components, I have selected some div and I'm going back to the components tab. If you observe, it was highlighted the component at that point. So in this way, you can identify what component is what in a larger application so that uh, you no need to go back and uh, search. Usually everyone used to search with the class names or with the IDs and they will go back to the component in a larger application. So we no need to do that in the components tab. You can straight away go. It will give what component it is, not only the component and the right side, you can identify what all the properties it got. So these are the properties this component got from its parent. And these are the events it has. So if you go back here, it is rendered by, it means what it will give the parent component of this current component. For example, the counter component was rendered by counters and counters component was rendered by app. It will give the hierarchy of its parent structure. Also the source file where exactly it was used. On the top, you can identify three options. Number one is inspecting the matching DOM element. If I click here, I will be going back to the elements tab. If I click here, I will be going back to the elements tab. And if I click log this component to the console, if I click here and go back to the console, I will be getting the counter component in the console. Usually we do this in the code part. I mean, we used to write console.log to know what property was rendered for that component exactly. And we'll verify what all the properties it got for some rendered property. Coming back to here, you can, you have another option to view the source file from where it was rendered, from where exactly the component was rendered. So these are the three options we can use. Also, you can live change the properties. I mean, you can change the property directly. So see here, I'm changing it to two. So if I change it to two, the component was modified here. It was modified to two. So I mean, you can modify the props and state as on when here, and you can reflect back those in the functionality. So you can debug in that way. If the application is more, you can search here the component name and you can uh, debug or uh, check whether what all the properties it got. Also, we have general. I have clicked this option, highlight the updates. So this option will help us as on when there is any re-render, it will highlight the components re-render. And debug, usually it shows what all the stacks or warnings we have and components. Exactly, if you know what type of component you need, you can filter it here in this way. Select the name of the component and give it only that component would be reflected back here. Whereas a profiler, let's come back to profiler uh, once we know about this profiler. So not only this, if you go back to the controller and I am typing 
dollar or if i select this it will return back the current instance component so here you can identify all what all we have so also i can do do a particular event as well so this it's like clicking an event uh, just i will do on decrement event so directly so it was decremented i have incremented in the property here and i have decremented in the console with this option so dollar or gives us the current instance of the component so in this way we can debug the application more de deeply so coming to the profiler this is all about understanding the timing of the component i mean which component took how much time to render and re-render to see that let's record it so as on when you go to the profiler tab it looks in this way click this start profiling now to do some actions i'm incrementing i'm decrementing i'm deleting so you can observe the re-rendered i mean uh, while it is re-rendering it is highlighting which component is re-rendered i mean uh, see there are a couple of lines it is showing which component was re-rendered exactly so now i'm stopping the profiling now you have ident observed there are a couple of commits i mean one by seven i mean i have done seven commits i mean seven actions the commit with long i mean uh, the color if you observe there if there is yellow color which is this yellow color represents it has taken more time to render whereas if there is any blue color it shows it has taken the less time to re-render if it is gray color it means the component was not re-rendered you can observe in each commit in the commit one how much time the components has taken in the commit two in the commit three commit four so you can observe the time it has taken to re-render and render and in one particular stage in the sixth sixth commit if you observe there are four counters and I have deleted one so one counter was removed in this way we can understand which component has taken more time in particular re-rendered in that way we can understand or reduce how, why that component has taken that much time this helps more in understanding how much the re time was taken by a component to re-render so here you can observe now i can hide the commits by selecting the minimum time i mean i can say if a component takes more time so i wanted to uh, concentrate only on that profiling so you can filter here in that way so this is all about the profiling and uh, components tab so in this way we can understand and debug our applications here directly you can modify the props and state and you can interact with the application so this is all about the react developer tools hope you understand the video thanks for watching